In wartime, there is enough blame. Who struck the first blow? I cannot say. They enslaved you, twisting the bracelets to their corrupted ways. We retaliated by destroying their aqueduct. We established an outpost, Zula, in the north, to watch the Serpent Men and prevent them from joining with their allies. And I began to formulate a powerful sorcery to ensure the safety of our people. The war continues, child. I cannot say when it will end. You may not remember us. You may not have been born among us. But I urge you to join us. Resist. Sabotage the giant kings and their works. We are coming for you. Alright, welcome back, boys and girls. So, on our last episode, we were able to get to level 54. We got all our obelisks. So, today, we're going to focus on getting max level, level 60. So, I'm going to run over here and uh, start harvesting purple lotus flowers to start our XP train. Once finished, we will move down the beach and farm the entire puffball mushroom patch near my base. Completing the puffball mushrooms, I made my way to the southern jungle to farm Black Lotus because it's one of the best ways to get XP. We will now be heading to the mounds, but first, before I pour out of the southern jungle, I would like to find out whose base this is. DBZ. According to the player list, this clan is the second largest clan on the server. Let's scout it out a little bit and just see if there's any potential loot here. Looks like the courtyard's pretty empty. Nothing out here we can just grab. This must be why the lower section of the bay seems to have gotten raided. Looks like the upper part of this base is intact. I don't see any missing anti-climb and I'm not going to be able to scale any higher right oh. now. But I am not hearing any noises like thralls hammering away in there or anything like that. They do have a few trolls out here and stuff, but I don't know. It's hard telling. We'll have to come back at a later date. Looks like there's just coal in this structure. That's about it. Not a morsel we can use. Just an animal pen. Nothing here. We're on our way to the map room to teleport to the mounds. Holy shit, that's a lot of fucking panthers. Yeah, they're not gonna let me pour. I'm gonna have to kill them all. There's like one more panther than usual. 
that's over here. is to clear the mounds of all the red lotus for XP. steel circle. Doink. Once again, we return to the Frost Temple with our uh, spiced pork to farm black ice to finish our leveling process. It's so difficult surviving in here farming black ice when you just have plant fiber clothing and the worst pots in the game, but we're getting her done. I managed to get this ice giant to glitch out on me, so hopefully we can finish leveling before we turn into a human icicle. I'm happy this ice giant decided to become my friend, but it's like breathing down my neck. I can hardly see what I'm fucking doing. Literally just hanging out here with his fucking crotch on my shoulder. There you have it. Level 60. We got it complete. Finally. No more black ice. No more lotus flowers. Fuck all that shit. We're done. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm done. Alright, let's spend our last couple points on rolling thrust in the agility tree. We no longer have to farm a bunch of resources that have no use to us during early game. So, now we can really start playing. Let's go YouTube, let's go farm some resources we can use. We are right outside of Center's Refuge, just south of uh, the summoning place. We're going to build a sandstone shack here. To house wheels and uh, some of our first benches because we're going to need to get some thralls knocked out. Um, Sinner's Refuge is definitely one of the best places to get tier 4 thralls. So this is one of the places I like to set up my first shack. Alright, let's speed this up. For any new players that just started playing Conan recently, if you're not building a wheel outside of Sinner's Refuge, you're really missing out. There literally can spawn every tier 4 bench thrall in the game, pretty much in this cave. I've gotten tanners, carpenters, blacksmiths, armors, you name it, I've gotten it in there. You can also get tier 4 Mitra priests, they literally grow on trees in here. You'll get so many priests, you won't know what to do with them, you'll just end up killing them when they spawn. So I always like to start a noob shack in this area. There's always a map room at the sinkhole not far away, so you always have good means of travel. You're close by to the spider spawns right here around the corner, which you can get spider silk to make light armor. Overall, it's just a good place to start out when you're first building up. Also, you can kind of see how I'm building the whole base and foundations all the way around, which makes it look kind of goofy, but... There's a reason for this. There's been exploits in the game where you can reach through walls and loot benches. And it's not completely patched. They have made it better. But anything that can be placed on your hotbar can be stolen through the wall. So, and if you don't have 
a good amount of space between the outside wall and the inside where your benches are, they will be robbing you blind. And if they don't rob you, just building thick like this will stop people from looking through the walls or the mesh to see what's in your base, you know, to find out if it's worth wasting their bombs. There's many ways to look through walls and meshing and ceilings and stuff like that, but everyone's aware of the first person and just punching the wall, but there's several other ways which I'm not going to get into, but just know you're going to want to build thick if you don't want people to know what you have playing inside. For a quick example, on the back side of my base you'll see my base is pushed up against the hill. That's a type of mesh and people can look through that mesh and they can't see what's inside your base. So you want to build completely 100% all the way around your base. And there's our complete noob shack ready for our wheels, our benches, or whatever we decide to put in here. Like I said, you can see it's completely surrounded. That's what you want to do. We're going to go ahead and put a few furnaces down and uh, whatever kind of benches I can make with what's in my inventory. I do kind of want to touch back on people reaching through walls and stealing loot out of your benches. People will tell you that it's 100% patched, and it is not. Trust me, it is not. I've tested it, and it still works. Um, you used to be able to loot everything out of the benches, but now you can only loot stuff that can be slotted on your hotbar. So trust me, you want to build thick. I decided to make some quick dump chests, that way I can clear my inventory. That way we have space to go farm stone, iron, coal, and stuff like that. That way we can craft our first benches, like the blacksmith bench, our carpenter's bench, and other benches. Travel to the silver mine. It's the number one best place to get stone. And I like to get some coal in here and some iron and a little bit of silver for silver. So we're gonna farm this cave up, then head back to base and smelt it and craft our benches. Get out of here, you damn hemorrhoid. Figures. Ah! Always goes on the ground. Skeletons and this three skull boss in here it makes it a lot more difficult to farm up the iron and coal that's used to be super easy to get here. So when you're fresh to the server, kind of sucks, makes it more difficult. Just gonna stand up here and hopefully they go away so I can farm this iron. <laughs> Alright, this should be about all I'm going to farm here, and then we'll head back to base. I decided to make a quick pit stop and get some glass flask from this merchant here in Sepamur City. 
run any glass Yay! flask for making respec pots and our buff potions when we Go get again. around to it. If you survive. Stop by a pool of water to fill my glass flask full of water because when you're a grub fresh on the server like I am, you don't have the luxury of having a tier 4 alchemist yet, so we gotta do it by hand. We have finally made it back to our noob shack. We're gonna melt down this iron into iron ingots and the stone into bricks. That way we can make some more benches for our noob shack here. There we go. Now we have enough iron ingots. We can make our first cheap little blacksmith bench so we can make some iron reinforcements. Here's our first carpenter bench. Place that right next to the smithy. Craft up some shaped wood. There we go. We have 100 iron reinforcements and we have the rest of the resources so let's get rid of this crappy blacksmith bench and upgrade to the improved blacksmith bench that way we have reduced costs and it'll craft a little bit faster same thing with the carpenter's bench we got the iron reinforcements and shape wood required to craft a improved version for the reduced cost and the uh, faster crafting. Here I was able to smell all the resources we had and crafted up iron reinforcements, iron, bricks, twine, shaped wood, insulated wood, everything we needed to craft up all of our benches to make this base usable. Some people are probably going to judge me and be like, why are you building all these benches right here outside of Sinner's Refuge? You're going to get bombed and they're going to get in here and they're going to steal all your stuff. Well, sometimes it's better to build in plain sight. They cannot see in here. As long as I don't have thralls hammering away in here, making noises, lights from multiple benches going, they won't be able to tell what's in here. So sometimes it's better to just hide in plain sight. Most people are going to run by this square structure right outside of Sinner's Refuge and they're going to think there's a fat wheel in here. Most people don't build like I am here at Sinner's Refuge. They just build a wheel, but they can't see in here. So they're just going to assume it's a wheel and they're going to most likely keep on running. And they're not going to stop and think twice. And this is not a permanent situation. It's just for me to build up quickly near a map room with resources nearby, thralls nearby, everything I'm gonna need to farm in my early game. So this is temporary. The temple base that I started building in episode one on Noob River, it's just no map room is nearby. There's no map room at the Northern jungle. There's no way for me to travel quickly and get the resources I need and all the stuff I need. So if I get bombed here, of course I'm gonna lose everything. But if I were to get bombed over there in tier one, I would have lost everything over there as well and it would have took me a lot longer to farm it because I have no easy way to travel or anything like that. I also get off work super early in the morning when nobody's on. That's when I'll throw my blacksmith on the bench, make our steel reinforcements, turn on my alchemist benches that emit a lot of light, stuff like that. So I'll keep it quiet in here the rest of the time. There we are. We have majority of all the benches we're going to need. We got some thrall wheels down so we can tame some tier 4 thralls here at Center's Refuge. Let's get in there, farm some brimstone, and find out if there is any tier 4 thralls in there we can use. Alright, 
let's climb up this brimstone and find out if there's any thralls in here we can use. Looking for some tier 4 bench thralls. That's a tier 3 blacksmith. We can use that for steel reinforcements. Let's knock that out. Got the worst trenching in the game, but hopefully it won't take too long. Come on, go night night. Go night night. You're gonna work for me now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Night, night. Alright, let's take our new slave back home to the wheel. He's going to work for us now. He's going to make us steel reinforcements, which is really important for tier 3 and many benches. base let's put this blacksmith three in the gibbet the gibbet is the same thing as a wheel it's just a dlc thing i got from the bazaar a while back i like them because they take up a little bit of space they do have a weird hitbox but it's definitely less space than a small wheel so i like to use them we're back in center's refuge where we left off Stone and looking for thralls. We're gonna chop up these NPCs and steal their body parts and put it in our fluid press. That way, we have blood for our respect pods. this out. It'll take a very short amount of time to tame it, and we will be able to cure ourselves of corruption, so we're going to make this dancer a personal performer. She will dance only for me now. Alright, let's take her back. Alright, there we go. Dancer in the gibbet. We're gonna need some gruel. It's been sitting here cooking. Fill the gibbets with some gruel. Press play. And there they are, they're taming. Back once again where we left off. Another dancer, we only need one. Kill that one. Let's see what tier 4 thrall spawn back here. Smelter. Yeah, let's knock that out. We'll need that as well. And she's out. Let's f 
finish farming this brimstone. I don't want to come back in here for the fourth time. So we'll wait a little bit and we'll come back later and check on more thralls. out of here. That wasn't a bad haul. We got brimstone and we got three thralls we can use. Taming up. Put our brimstone in the cauldron for now. Alright, we made our way to Hunnaman's Grotto. We need some crystal because we're gonna wanna craft some dragon powder. So in here we're gonna get some crystal. Fortunately, at the Age of War patch there is no longer army crystal with a pickaxe. So we will be picking it by hand. So yeah. Thanks a lot, Funcom. Appreciate it. It was fine the way it was, but appreciate it. minutes later I'm still hand picking crystal I'm aware we can use sorcery now to farm the crystal but I just too early in this wipe for me I don't have sorcery so. all right we're back to base we got the crystal brimstone demon blood and steel fire everything we need for our first dragon powder this one dragon powder we will turn into 10 explosive arrows so that'll be great we can go farm star metal finally get out of the stone age and start farming the big boy numbers we are now turning our one dragon powder into 10 explosive arrows there we go now we're also going to craft a bow then we will teleport up to the frost temple and work our way all the way down to the mound searching for star metal our first star metal node. Hell yeah. Not bad. 580 ore for our first star metal node. There's our second star metal node hanging on that cliff right there. Let's crack it and climb up there. Boom. Making my way around the fire so I can climb directly above the star metal node and then I'm going to drop down on top of it and farm it from the top. That way I don't take burn damage and fall back down. Third node. Cracker. Jesus. I'm not raiding your camp. I just want the star metal. Alright, 
Alright, well, the other NPCs seem to have just ran away, so I'm cool with that. Oh, there's another beautiful star metal node right there waiting for us. Another one we're going to have to climb for. So, I don't know. Breaking star metal just kind of satisfying. We haven't had too bad of a star metal run. We got a few nodes. Could have got more, but it's not bad. All right, let's head up to the Frost Temple from the mounds. That way we can get some black ice to smell. Back at the Frost Temple to freeze our nipples off again. But we need this black ice for smelting this star metal and bars. If I would have saved some of the black guys from our leveling run, I would not be up here farming again, but I threw it on the ground, so here we are. I kind of want that bear's backpack. Who knows, it could have some alchemical base or something in there we can really use. Yeah, let's go back and get it. Might be something good in here. Oh, crap. Oh. Well, that was definitely not worth it. Not only that, it was a bare one, so it cannot even have alchemical base. That was a waste of time. Guess we'll run back and grab our body. Alright, we got our body. Let's get out of here before I get clapped like a noob again. There we go. Everything in the furnace. We're making star metal bars now. Crafting our first star metal pickaxe. Awesome. The star metal pickaxe will improve our farming rates a lot and it's easy to maintain. We'll throw an advanced tool upgrade kit on it as well. Looks like our dancer is finished. Let's slap her down. Now we don't have to worry about corruption anymore. And that should be a good spot right there. Our blacksmith three is now finished putting them on the blacksmith bench. We'll go over to our cauldron and grab the steel fire I've been crafting up and we'll make our first few steel reinforcements. Get a steel fire, iron reinforcements, and let's craft. Crafting up our first star metal skinning knife so we can get hide later. crafted up a couple advanced tool upgrade kits for my pickaxe and my skinning knife. Back at Center's Refuge to check to see what tier 4 thrall has spawned. Looks like we got an alchemist here, which is awesome. Let's kill everything else.
I also made myself an iron truncheon, so it'll be a bit better than that crappy one made out of plant fiber and wood or whatever. Alright, let's take this bad boy home. Uh, it's awesome we have a tier 4 alchemist now. Let's put it in the gibbet. Tier 4 alchemist will help so we can make oil directly out of the alchemist bench. And we'll also be able to fill our flask with water. I also crafted up a star metal katana. That way we can at least have a little more damage. Because using a sword when I'm an agility build is no more. So, I mean, this... Sword is still kind of crappy, but at least I get the buff for my agility. Teleported up to the mounds. I want to clear out all these trees. It's my favorite place to farm wood with the pickaxe because you get resin, bark, wood, and there's so many trees here. So we're going to farm up a bunch of wood and uh, make sheep wood. All right, we made it back safely to base with our farm. Nobody attacked us, so let's put it all away and craft up some shaped wood and insulated wood. After crafting up that insulated wood, I was able to make an improved preservation box so I can store all my gruel in here. I prefer to eat gruel. It's cheap and it fills food and water. So that's my main source of food in this game. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up chapter two. We got a lot done. And uh, yeah, if you made it to the end and you enjoyed, subscribe. And I'll see you for chapter three.